name shines like the sun's rays through the early pages of Persian history. His justice was proverbial, and throughout the known world, the oppressed found shelter under his humane rule, and were able to forget the tyranny they had previously suffered. The biblical prophets praise him as a righteous king, and in Isaiah we read, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Cyrus the Great founded a mighty empire, and the effects of its civilization and culture, like an ever-burning flame, have continued to be felt for 2,500 years. And even in Iran's darkest moments, this flame was never extinguished. Early in 1963, yet another glorious event occurred in the long history of Iran. Inspired by the humanitarian ideals of the Shah and Shah Arya Mir, the nation determined to carry out a revolution which has destroyed the remnants of feudalism and created a dynamic and progressive Iran. The first objective of the revolution was to change the face of Iran's rural areas. To do so, a sweeping land reform program was initiated, and three revolutionary corps were formed staffed by young Iranians eligible for military service. Their objective is to eradicate ignorance, disease, and poverty among the farmers of Iran who form the majority of the population and now, for the first time, own their own land. To date, more than 50,000 literacy corpsmen, aided by nearly 3,000 female colleagues, have served in Iran's villages. Over 10,000 literacy core schools have been established, and at present there are nearly half a million pupils attending these schools. The health corps, with its mobile clinics staffed by young doctors and sanitation specialists, has done much to improve health standards in rural areas. Over 2,400 doctors and 5,000 public health specialists have served in the health corps, which is now expanding its work with hundreds of young corps women who advise village women on family planning and health problems. The Extension and Development Corps, established to help Iran's villagers modernize young engineers, agriculturists, veterinarians and technicians, more than 13,000 of them so far, go to the most remote parts of the country to advise the villagers how to use new equipment and build better homes. They also teach them to farm with fertilizer and improved seeds. This help is rapidly raising agricultural output and improving living standards in the villages. Another step toward the eradication of illiteracy is the construction of 2,500 schools in rural areas to mark the 2,500th anniversary of the foundation of the Persian Empire. Public response to this voluntary program has been so great that the number of such schools to be subscribed by the end of the current Iranian year is now expected to reach 4,000. The rapid rise in school attendance has necessitated the construction of new primary and secondary schools all over the country. Last year, over four and a half million youngsters were receiving full-time education. This is almost double the figure at the start of the White Revolution. In addition, there were 74,000 students in Iran's numerous universities and institutes of higher education. This is more than three times the figure before the revolution. Rising educational standards and the transformations that Iranian society has undergone are creating new aspirations, especially among the younger generation. As a result, the country is heading rapidly towards industrialization, and the economy now has a solid industrial base. 
Most of Iran's oil income, which in 1970 amounted to about $1.3 billion, is allocated to industrial and productive development projects. And Iran now has an impressive range of heavy, medium, and small-scale industries. There are numerous oil refineries and related installations in Iran, all operated by Iranian engineers and specialists. communications are a vital part of this vast land's economic infrastructure. In recent years, thousands of miles of all-weather highways have been built, and the country's road network now consists of over 24,000 miles of main and secondary roads. The rail network has also been extended, and most of the country's larger cities are linked by the 3,000-mile railway system which has recently been connected to the European Railway Network through Turkey. The National Airline has a fleet of jet aircraft and regularly serves major cities in Europe and the Middle East, as well as 20 destinations in Iran itself. Most of the cities of Iran now have television transmitters. And Iran's television network is, after Japan, the second largest in Asia. This enables the people to keep in touch with the latest world events and brings culture and education into homes and television clubs all over the country while also providing a new form of entertainment. An Earth satellite station provides instant communications between Iran and the rest of the world. Rainfall is scanty in most parts of Iran, and every effort is being made to conserve the country's precious water resources, which were nationalized as part of the White Revolution. Eleven major reservoir dams, as well as a number of associated or independent diversion dams, have been completed in the past decade. These